So the first five cards deal here with your love, romance, relationship sector, and the second spread, the second five cards deal with other areas of your life, as well as spiritual advice that is coming through for you. So I like the energy for this week as it pertains to love and relationship, because I feel like you're taking a little bit more of a, a detached approach when it comes to commitment, when it comes to um, what you expect from other people and uh, giving the other people time and space to sort things out from their end before they come to you or before they come back to you or before they reach out to you. So while I was shuffling this out, the message that I'm hearing is, um, why don't you, you know, let me know when you're ready. And I feel like this is coming from you. And uh, you're also telling the other person, um, you know, just um, contact me whenever you're ready. Just take care of your things and then contact me when you're ready. And I don't see you sitting still waiting around for them to contact you. I just feel like you're giving them that space. You're coming into a state of being very understanding and very emotionally mature. And you're also understanding that the other person might not be ready. They might have a lot of things that they're dealing with. So you're going to, you know, with loving detachment, kind of uh, withdraw halfway, withdraw from this situation until they sort things out from their end before you can uh, decide if you want to invest. So you're not just waiting around for the other person to be ready. You're doing your own thing, enjoying the single life, because with this card, it's like this is somebody who has a lot of love to give. But they're not indiscriminate. They actually have high standards. And um, they're, I wouldn't say picky about the people that they, they date, but they know what's good for them and they know what's not good for them. And if you're dealing with somebody who's got like, you know, multiple people, multiple things that they're working on in their, they're trying to sort out in their own life, then you know that it's going to be burdensome. And so you're taking this detached approach and, you know, having them come to you when they're ready. And there is going to be so much communication coming through from other people. The Eight of Wands is a card about, you know, very quick, rapid succession of emails, text messages, invitations. And the Judgment card is all about contact, initiating that contact, getting the contact that you're hoping for. And, um, communication, contact. This is like flying back and forth. So this is going to be a really fruitful month for people showing their interest in you, uh, plans being solidified, probably people that are um, coming to you and they're like, do you want to travel here? Do you want to travel there? Can I travel to come see you? Uh, do you want to do sightseeing with me? Do you want to, you know, meet my family, go to this gathering, the social function, etc., etc.? So with that loving detachment, I feel like it brings about, you know, the right people on the right wavelength that would be very good for you. So the Eight of Wands is communication distance. And, um, it, it deals with communication over large distances. So for many of you, you might be expanding outside of your geographical location when it comes to dating. For others, you might be going through some type of a, um, I feel like, community event. Um, I'm also seeing a lot of outdoors, music, festival, you know, things like that. And it's uh, we're winding down towards the end of the summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. So I feel like, you know, there are a lot of um, last minute gatherings outdoors that can uh, where you could, you know, have a lot of fun and meet a lot of new people. Um, the judgment card, for some reason, I'm seeing institutions. So possibly meeting through schools for those of you who have children who are single parents or who are not so much single parent, but like divorced parents, you're going to PTA meetings, you might uh, strike up conversation with your, um, <laughs> your uh, kids, um, classmates, parents. And then I'm also seeing like church, choir and things like that, where you could potentially uh, meet like minded people. Okay religious institutions, educational institutions, or even meeting people through family introductions and things like that. And that those are the, the best avenues, I think, you know, to uh, meet new people that are already, ha that have already been pre-screened. So there's a lot of communication, a lot of contact, a lot of invitations as well coming in for you. 
if you are dealing with a Virgo, and I have here the Hermit. This is the card of Virgo, as well as Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, with this Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles is about making plans. And in the romantic front, it can deal with a situation where things start out very, very platonically. So if you're dealing in particular with an Earth signs, Earth signs are a little bit, um, they're, they're not like flamboyant about their emotions. And they tend to, you know, hold things close to their chest until they feel like it's safe for them to reveal how they feel until they feel like you're on board or until they feel like they have something reliable or solid or stable with you that's when they will make their feelings known so if you're dealing on an earth sign they're definitely interested they're trying to like make plans this is somebody who is very methodical and they plan things and with the hermit it's a higher vibration of um, character and morality. So what it means is I feel like, you know, this is somebody that wants to build a future. They're not just, I'm also sensing um, they might have children of their own. And because of it, they're very careful about who they date and who they bring into the picture. So they're not out, you know, looking for a good time. They're a little bit more serious about, um, finding the right relationship partner and they are like they're they're self-aware enough to know that they'd rather be by themselves than be in bad relationships so this is not somebody that likes to settle this is not somebody that um gets you know wrapped up in bad relationships so you, you've got somebody who's quite picky and they see something in you, they see your kindness, they see how loving and and just you know emotionally um, mature you are and they see the level of devotion that you bring to the table and they're kind of like shining the the spotlight on you and uh, thinking as well you know this is the one I want to be with so there's a lot of um, relationship building that can be had here with a an earth sign um, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's quite successful who puts their career first they might travel for work they might be very busy with a lot of different projects. Um, they might be very deeply immersed in their community. You know, like they're somebody that's well respected. Um, they do a lot of projects with community outreach. Um, they could do quite a bit of travel. So the timing between meeting up and, and, you know, being able to get the relationship rolling, that's also a source of um, not so much a, an issue. I don't feel it's an issue. You're off doing your own thing. And, uh, you know, that's why I mentioned, like, you know, um, call me when you're ready or call me when you're in town or, you know, just um, call me when things settle down for you. So I feel like you're giving them that courtesy and that space. And that is greatly appreciated. And they're also wondering about you. You know, what are you up to? This is kind of like doing research. You know, when we say do research, it can also denote like. Uh, stalking you on social media, looking you up or um, finding out more about you and doing it in a very discreet, in a very um, under the radar type of a way because earth signs are actually, um, they're, they're very direct with their approach, but I also feel like they, they like to, you know, keep things under wraps which you would appreciate, Scorpio. They like to keep things under wraps until they're sure, okay? So lots of movement happening in the relationship front. And I feel like definitely you've got somebody that's wanting to build something with you. And they're trying to figure out your motives and whether or not you feel the same way. So for those who are singles and out there and looking and, you know, things like that, this is a really good week for you to find the right people. We are as well in Virgo season. So they're going to be coming out of the woodwork a little bit, um, which is great for couple relationship building loving detachment making travel plans and things like that with your significant other um i also feel like this is a card about you know looking for venues looking for places restaurants um looking for it's like doing the research into you know where should we go what should we eat where should we stop what um, monument should we, you know, visit? So, like, there's something thing here about traveling, uh, making plans to travel, doing sightseeing with you and possibly a group of people, 
or with you and a significant other, or maybe somebody has children, so it's you and them and, and their children or your your kids, for example. So it's going to be a really, really wonderful week for invitation, sightseeing, and just, you know, spending time with your significant other or people you, that, you, that might have a crush on you. In other areas of your life, I feel like there is some major, major, um, it's weird, but I feel like a, a change of direction, okay? What has not been working, especially on the communication front? What has not been working? What plans are kind of falling through? What are some of the things that we're not really anticipating? What are some things that we decided on that might have been a little bit foolhardy or it was, um, we had high hopes and expectations for it, but for whatever reason, the vendors, the people that were supposed to be on board, now they're kind of leaving. And then we're left kind of picking up the pieces. So I feel like there was a, a plan or something, a course of action that you or another person might have uh, gone into without knowing all the facts. And this is the week where the facts are kind of laid out for you. For some of you, you might have a, a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, um, that I feel like this fire sign here with the King of Wands it's somebody as well that, you know, they, they, they see the big picture, but I feel like, you know, as stubborn as you are, Scorpio, once you've decided on a course of action, you follow through, right? You don't abandon ship um, halfway. And so they might have foreseen the flaws in your plans, but they're like, no, I'm just going to let them, you know, do it and let them learn. Not so much because they're spiteful, but I feel like they know you well enough to just kind of let you do your own thing and figure things out as you go. And I feel like you're consulting them or talking to them about, you know, work projects and plans that might not have come out the way that you wanted. And then you're kind of like hashing out a strategy for the next time. Okay, in the future, we're not going to do this. We're going to do that. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with this major learning curve that you are experiencing, what not to do, how to deal with people, how to handle stress, how to handle differing personalities. Because with this King of Wands, this is leadership capability. This is somebody that garners a lot of respect and admiration from people and people willingly follow them because they know how to lead. They know how to work with opposing energies. They know how to rile people up and, you know, get people um, to passionately take up arms for their cause. And I feel like this is somebody that has a lot of skills, like people skills, that you can uh, learn a lot from. And so with this Ace of Swords, this is pretty much, you know, uh, a strategy, a new plan of action, a new course of action, so that we don't end up in a state where people are conflicted and and egos clash and, you know, which creates um, a very divisive environment. You could be dealing with an air sign that might be the catalyst for all of this change and all of these new strategies as well. Or they might have um, come up with a plan that didn't work. And now you're the one redirecting the energy or reformulating the plan. So air signs, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Um, this air sign's a little bit on the impulsive end, okay? Page of Swords. And the way they communicate might be a little bit abrasive. Um, air signs are really blunt. A lot of people think that, you know, Sagittarius are blunt. Sagittarius um, people are blunt about the little things. They're, they're blunt 24-7. Air signs, when they get mad, and I do feel an energy of someone who's really intelligent, but when they get mad... They might have the bluntness of a Sagittarius. Like they, they can be kind of like, oh yeah, I don't need you. You know, they, they say a lot of things that they don't mean in the heat of passion and anger. And I feel like you're dealing with somebody who is very intelligent, very um, inquisitive. But the scope of their vision is very limited to what they know and they they kind of find it hard to put themselves in other people's shoes so for example if you are are you know giving them advice you know let, let's just say um i think our co-worker um 
Lawrence is going to do this. And they're like, no, Lawrence is not going to do that. Nobody in their right mind would do that. So they say things or they think things in a very uh, me-centered type of a way, in a very rational way. And um, they're, they're very confined to what they know. But what you know is that you have really good insights into human nature and human character. You understand emotionally what drives people. And so you also understand as well, there's that element of uncertainty and unpredictability when we are dealing with a lot of people. So some people are going to cut out early because, you know, there is an incentive for them to stay. And then other people are going to stay for the fame and the glory. But when it comes down to getting their hands dirty and actually doing the work, they might be at a deficit. So you understand what drives people, what motivates people, whereas this person, they have a more clinical approach to how people act, how people behave. And I feel like their assessment is not always correct, okay? So this is a really good week overall for you to reinvent, you know, like form a new strategy, pick the right people based on what you know about human nature, strengths and weaknesses, and then, you know, pick people that might even be compatible so that we don't end up with this conflictual, uh, ego-driven type of uh, environment where hurt people get hurt, feelings are not spared, and people are just inconsiderate. Okay.